Hi there, I'm Katie for Resticate, and today we're going to be working on a clothing pattern. So this is actually going to be an edging that I'm going to add to this. I've done one side already, so I'll show you guys what that looks like. I'll show you now, and then I'll do a close-up later for you right there. So what this is, is these are actually baby leggings that my mom made for my little girl. And I'm going to go in and add the edging to it. I'm making it on something that is a stretchy item. So that adds its own dynamic, and I'll talk about that as we go. I also know that I'm going to be washing these a lot. Um, I learned early on when I was doing tatted edging on clothing that if you're actually going to be washing it, you want to do less picos. Um, it's really pretty to have a lot of picos and make it very lacy looking, but that can be a nightmare when it comes to actually washing it, drying it, and being able to wear it again. So on this particular one, it's going to have minimal picos, but it's still going to have a, a lacy effect. So we're going to be doing this second leg right here, and I will show you that process. And then if you want a pattern for the, you'll either see a link on this video that you can follow or there'll be information below the video and you can follow that link to my website and there will be a pattern there that you can, you can follow. If you enjoy this project, make sure and like it, comment below if you get a chance. And if you haven't subscribed, please do that and you'll get notified whenever new content is posted. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so here are a pair of baby bottoms, some stretchy leggings that my mom actually made for my daughter and this is about a, a six month six to nine month size we really could do this on any fabric whether it's a linen or a stretchy knit like this is and this actually I think this was actually made out of some upcycled t-shirt material so um, let me show you the first one this is what I'm going to be showing you how to do today and this is a, an edging it's two steps this is going to be the first layer right here which is attaching directly to the fabric and then I come back and do a second layer of edging on top of that. This is very basic tatting. It's a good one to start with. It's still fun even if you're an expert tatter so I hope you'll enjoy this project. This is one you could do on cuffs. You could do it on so many different things. Um, clothing, bedding, linen, purses, all kinds of items and it's just it's just a fun simple one to do. It works up pretty quick. I made this one without any free picos it only has the picos to join the layers together. It still gives it a lacy look, but it's a little bit more clean. And the reason I did this is if you have a lot of picos and you go to laundry or clothing, it can be a real nightmare to get those picos straight again. So this one, they're not going to be able to curl very much because they're contained. They're not loose. So this will be a good one that I can actually use for her because I can wash it. And I won't have to put hours and hours to getting it laying flat again after it's been washed. So it should be more durable and more easy. To use and maintain. All right, so we're going to get started. We're going to make the first layer first. So let me grab my thread and needle and I will get it threaded and I will be back. Okay, so for this one I'm using my size 5 needle. This is my favorite one that I like to use. It has a little bit of a point and that enables me to put it through the fabric without having to sew it on afterwards. You can totally make this and then just sew it on afterwards if you like. It's a little bit easier for me um, to just make it and tat it right onto the item. Then I don't have to worry about my scale. I don't have to pay as much attention to getting it exactly right because I don't have to then sew it on afterwards. I'll know as I'm doing it if it's going to be too big or too small. And I can make those adjustments as I go. And this is actually a size 20 thread. You could use a 10. That would be totally fine. I just happen to have this um, 20 on hand. It works well with the size 5 needle as well. And it's a little bit lacier, a little bit finer. So I'm going to get start started. I'm going to find one of the corners. I'm just going to insert my needle. And try and bring that up for you so it's nice and close. Right like that. I'm going to insert my needle back to front. Just catching ever so lightly that fabric edge. Once I pull through enough thread, to work with and for this one I'm going to do about two feet then I'm going to tie a knot like that and that's going to be where I'm going to start and you could do it directly on the seam if you want I did it off to the side a little bit so it would show up better and now we're ready to get started and this whole project is made of chains so no rings to worry about so what we're going to do is chain three Pico, chain three. So you're going to have a total of six double stitches on your needle. 
separated by one pico right there. So three pico three. Then we're going to slide it off. Right like that. I like to go ahead and get it into the shape that I want and that'll help me judge how far I want to do them apart. And this one I'm doing it about a quarter of an inch. I'm just going to slide that thread through using the needle through the fabric back to front nice and slow I like that and then pull it down until I get the right tension so I like that tension I like that size of an arch and then I'm going to make a knot there all right like that and then I'm going to use my special step and I will link a video on how to do and why to do the special step to this video. You can find it in the information below. I'll also put a link on the screen. Okay, so now we're ready to just do another chain. Again, three double stitches. Pico, three double stitches. All right, we're ready to slide it off our needle. Shape it and insert that needle back to front again. Again, about a half an inch. And then if you don't know how to do the knot, I'll try and do it nice and slow this time. So again, I'm gonna adjust my tension on my chain until I get it to what I want it to be, nice arch. And then I'm going to take my needle put it behind the thread going to the thread ball, bring it around slowly, and this is to make the knot. So you'll see it's making a loop, and then I just insert my needle back through that loop. Pull it tight, and that's my knot. Okay, so I'm gonna do my special step again, and then I'm going to do the next one. So I'm just going to keep making chains until I come all the way back around to the other side and I will show you as I near that point. If you hear any funny noises in the background, I have a young baby in the background with me, so she's my, my supervisor. Right like that, so I'll keep going all the way around and then I'll check back in once I get it almost done. So I worked ahead and I've got almost all of them done now. 
I've just got one more to do so I'm going to make this one and then show you how I attach it. So three more double stitches again Pico, three more double stitches. So three double stitches, Pico, three double stitches. Slide the work off the needle. This time I'm going to insert back to front through the fabric right at the base of that very first chain. Pull that together, make a knot. Right there. So I've, then I'm going to put my needle through the thread at the base of that first chain, pull it together and make one more knot. So there's a double knot here. At this point I'm going to cut my threads. I'll then run my needle back through my previous tatting to secure those thread ends and then I'm ready to start my next layer or row. So let me get caught up to there and then I will show you what to do. Okay, so now we have here for comparison again, this is the completed edging and this is the first row. So if you like it really frilly and lacy, you could stop here and you could leave those picots exposed. It's really cute and playful. It's going to be harder to launder and to take care of over time, especially in kids clothes. So again, if you like it frilly, then have those exposed picots. If not, then we're going to go on to the second step. The second step, we're going to thread our needle again. I'm going to leave about two feet of thread where I start. So I'm going to pick this up, I'm going to go back to roughly that same corner, and I'm going to just thread my needle through any free pico. Get my thread positioned here. Once it's threaded through, I'm going to pull about two feet of thread and make a knot right there. At this point, I'm going to make a chain that's completely double stitches, no picots. I'm just going to do six double stitches. And then I'm going to join it to the next pico. I'm going to slide it off my needle. Join it to my next pico by just sliding that needle through the pico, adjusting my tension so it makes the arch that I want, and then making a knot. Right like that. Make my little special step. And then start again. So I'm going to do six more double stitches for the next chain. my work off my needle. Loop my needle through my next free pico. Make my knot. Okay, we're just going to repeat that all the way around. So let me do a few more. Right, like that. I'm going to keep going and then I'll show you what it looks like at the end. Okay, so I've tatted all the way around that second row except for the last chain. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that. Same amount of stitches, six double stitches. And this is such a basic and simple tatting project, but it really is cute. It looks very nice. 
and clean and it just gives it that extra little playfulness. All right, so we have six double stitches. Slide it off your needle. You're gonna join to this pico right here, the very first one that you started on. Pull it tight to the shape you want, make your knot, all right, like that, and it's all complete. So I'm gonna make one more knot here, so there's two, and then I will cut my thread, hide my thread ends, and I'll be all done. After this one's ironed, it's gonna look like this one here, a little bit more clean lines, all right, like that. Okay, so there you have it, both sides done. I'm gonna iron this one so that they both look the same and then I will have my little girl model. All right, I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, make sure and like and comment on this video. Maybe let me know what you would use this edging for. And please also subscribe if you haven't done that. And when you do, make sure and hit that notification bell and you get notified of all new content. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you again next time. Bye.